Hello, welcome to Revenant Reads. I'm Ben, and this is the Soggy Expat Book Maniac Random Questions tag. So the title of this tag is a little bit of a mouthful. Uh, it was created by Sean the Book Maniac and also the uh, Soggy Expat Book Nerd. Um, I'll have their links for them uh, down below. I was tagged in this, uh, I was tagged for this, um, by Mark over at Book Time with Elvis, and it was a few months ago that he tagged me. Um, I was going through uh, a house move at that point. Um, I had no time to really film or do any kind of tags, but now that things are settling in, um, I'm in my office, which I'm still, it's going to look kind of messy for a while. It's Office is not the priority in the house, but the rest of the house is starting to look pretty good. Um, I'll eventually show off what the library looks like in a video. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, over the next few weeks, I do want to catch up on some of the tags that I've been tagged in. Um, so if you've recently tagged me, I'm not ignoring it. Uh, I'm trying to write it down and I'll get to it eventually. I do enjoy doing tags. Um, just there's not the priority when I'm filming. Uh, but this one I figured um, I don't need too many props at all for this. Uh, I have some books behind me, but a lot of my books you can also see are inside boxes. So whatever is accessible to me is accessible to me. Um, so these are random questions just to get to know people better. So let's begin. Uh, the first one, soggy. Uh, cold soggy fries, yay or nay? Uh, I'd say nay, um, with an exception. Uh, I think most fries don't taste very good after they're cold and soggy. However, if they're seasoned fries, like waffle fries or curly fries, those are okay. Uh, those usually still taste pretty good. Uh, two, expat, have you ever lived abroad? If not, would you? Um, I have not lived abroad, but I would. Um, I think that would be a great experience. Um, just didn't really come up for me. Um, of course, I have a family now, so I can't just, you know, say, hey, see you guys later. Um, but uh, I would not be opposed to living abroad, of course, depending on the circumstance and where. Um, book. Uh, a trip you took and or would take uh, because a book or author made you want to see it in person. I don't have like fictional answers for this, but I am an avid reader of history. History is what makes me want to travel. That's what makes me want to go to places. Um, you know, reading about a place and buildings and locations and people and cultures and um, all of that, the, the nonfiction reading that I do, the historical fiction that I, that I do, sorry, the historical reading that I do, um, that's what compels me to want to see more and to uh, travel more. So I'm just going to say that. Um, not anything specific, uh, not a specific book or author. It is history reading that feeds my, my love of travel. <clears throat> uh, number four, book. Uh, a book or author from Canada and or Wales uh, that you'd like to read. Um, I believe those are the two locations where the originators of this tag live. Um, for a Welsh author, I could say author Mackin. I don't know, if, hopefully I'm saying his name right, uh, who wrote a lot of like supernatural horror um, back in the 19th century. He wrote um, The Great God Pan, which is certainly a book that I want to get to. Um, so that's my answer for that. Uh, random. Embarrassing parent story time. Uh, a time your parent or slash guardian embarrassed you to your core and you're still recovering from, or a time you were that parent. Um, I don't have too many personal stories about being embarrassed, but you know, for some reason, my six-year-old daughter, I constantly am embarrassing her, and I don't know, I don't intend to. <coughs> um, she can be very sensitive about certain things. Um, I remember the last time was when we were trick-or-treating around our new neighborhood, and um, she went to go, you know, grab some candy from a bucket, and I just said something like, oh, you know, like, don't take too much. That's all it was. It was, it was, you know, just a parent being like, don't grab all the candy that you see out of the bucket. Um, and next thing I know is we're walking away from the house. She's got tears. My wife is consoling her. <laughs> and she says that I, I embarrassed her by saying that. And I'm like, you know, I, I never know what it's going to be. I don't know what it's going to be uh, to set her off. But um, I seem to, at least every few weeks or so, I, I devastatingly embarrass her. Um, and... You know, I, I feel like if you don't embarrass your kids, sometimes you're probably not parenting right. Um, so, you know, I don't worry about it too much, but I don't always understand how I'm embarrassing her. Oh, well. Uh, number six, uh, maniac. 
Uh, one or two other things that you are maniac about, aside, obviously, from being a book maniac. Uh, so, um, I guess you can call it a horror maniac. Um, I do have horror movie posters, like, inside my kitchen, uh, my wall. Um, right to the side of me, I've got two racks of DVDs and Blu-rays of horror movies. I co-host a um, horror movie podcast, a horror movie discussion podcast called The Horror Cast. Been doing that for you know, quite a few years now. <clears throat> um, so, yeah, horror is uh, an essential part of who I am. So I guess I could be called a horror maniac. Um, and I guess, you know, I, I've always been something of a maniac with history. I just always loved history, reading about it, uh, seeing history, artifacts, um, you know, that... I guess that's something I'm a maniac about. I mean, there are other things that I like and that I collect and et cetera. I wouldn't, I don't know if I'd go maniac status with that stuff though. Um, seven, random. Have you ever been hideously lost, literally or figuratively? I have not been hideously lost, literally. Um, figuratively, I mean, yeah, I guess so. Um, I remember <coughs> um, in as an undergrad in college having to take a, a math class and um i i got away my senior year in high school without taking any math i never really liked math um so i took what i thought was going to be the easiest class it was called elementary applied mathematics and i was like that elementary applied mathematics that sounds really easy uh so i went in there and then i realized you know within the first lesson or so that it was like business pre-calculus and i had no background at all for that stuff and um i was lost uh i gave it one more try to see if i could figure out what was going on and then after that i dropped the class um so yeah that's definitely the most lost that i've ever been um inside a classroom setting uh i guess there's a certain i don't know if it's irony um but it's it's curious that uh my wife now teaches that same course um at the university so uh yeah, I dropped it and she teaches it. So it just shows uh, polar opposites, opposites attract sometimes. Um, eight, random, a memorable encounter with a stranger. Um, first one, you know, back, uh, this is early 2000s or mid 2000s or so, the aughts. Um, I was working at a convenience store at night. Um, there was a deli there that was open during the day, but the rest of it was just basically a convenience store. And I was the only one there, and that's that was pretty typical. I was just the only one running in at night. And uh, there was one very, very slow night. I, I was hardly, like, nobody was coming in. And within the last hour or so, this guy walks in. He had kind of a, a long, tan trench coat, um, you know, kind of a, a brimmed hat. <clears throat> and he looked like he was in good shape. He was, you know, my guess would be like maybe late 50s or something like that. And he was asking me questions about like the next town over. Is there like a, are there churches that offer like housing to people who don't have a house? And this guy looked very, you know, he looked pretty well dressed actually. Um, and as he's talking to me, he just starts, uh, he starts explaining his journey that he's on. He says, he, he, he said he was on a journey or, or a quest or something like that. He had said that he had been walking um, from like Midtown Manhattan or it was like 83rd Street or something like that. He had just started walking, and he'd been walking ever since. And he got a couple rides here and there, but he was going to be walking all the way up to Vermont. Um, now, if you don't know, um, you know U.S. geography, um, I am in western Connecticut. So to drive where he said he started walking would have been at least a good hour and a half drive. Um, and Vermont is several hours uh, away from where I was. So he had a lot of walking to do. Um, it's a pretty big area. And... He was telling me, uh, you know, that basically he made it sound like there was the government was after him and there was a woman up in Vermont that he was trying to get to and then they would be safe. And he was talking about how this is when George Bush was president, uh, George W. Bush, um, how they're watching us through the televisions. They can take pictures of us. And uh, he has information that's going to basically blow it all up. Um, that's going to bring everything down. So the more and more he talked, you know, the more that I'm realizing this guy is like a functioning schizophrenic or something. Uh, but he, he had all these kind of elaborate theories and he was very earnest about all this. Um, and, uh, I ended up giving him like free coffee and stuff just cause I kind of felt bad for him. He was a really nice guy. Um, but it was interesting. It, it was, I talked to the guy for like 20 something minutes and he was it was quite the conversation. Uh, very interesting. Uh, but I always, I always wonder what happened to that guy. 
um, okay, number nine, uh, random. Uh, what did you want to be when you grow up? Um, if you have now achieved that in real life, what's it like to be fantastically stable as an adult? Asking for a friend. Uh, I don't know if I ever really achieved what I wanted to be. Um, you know, I'm I'm a social studies teacher uh, in a middle school, and I think I'm pretty good at it. Uh, you know, I think that are there other things I'd like to try? Certainly, um, but. I'm also, you know, to kind of answer this in a more of a roundabout way, I feel like I'm, you know, I'm in my early 40s, I kind of feel like I'm going through a second phase of adulthood. Um, I'm just kind of dedicating more time to to learning more, more things that I, I want to know. Um, like, you know, I'm finally learning Latin, um, which I've talked about in some previous videos. Uh, always wanted to learn Latin, so I'm going to start that. Um, I'm going to... I, the plan is in the very near future to start taking Yaido classes uh, so I can start learning the uses of, uh, of a katana, or the Japanese sword. Um, you know, and, and Booktube is giving me more avenues. Um, I kind of feel like I'm, I'm, I'm kind of starting new things as an adult. So I feel like I'm reinventing some of my own, uh, some of my, my characteristics, my personality. Um, also I'm in a brand new house, uh, recently moved, of course, like I was talking about. So, you know, I, I feel like there's a whole new phase going on. So I'm still adulting. Um, I'm not always very good at it, but, uh, I do feel like I'm already a different adult than I was a year ago. So still achieving, still achieving, uh, that stable adulthood. Um, never going to get there, but that's where I am. Um, random, are you a people watcher? Uh, do you have good peripheral hearing. Uh, share an anecdote of three. Um, <clears throat> I guess I don't really have too many good anecdotes, um, or at least not ones I could think of. I'm sure that I've seen plenty of things, uh, but I kept blanking on this one. Um, I've done a decent amount of traveling. Um, if I'm in an urban environment sitting down, then yes, I do people watch. Uh, however, if I'm not like traveling, I generally just mind my own business. Um, and I don't people watch all that much. Uh, now, of course, I'm in an urban, urban environment. I'm going to also people watch just for safety reasons, um, you know. Uh, but uh, my peripheral hearing, I used to have excellent peripheral hearing. And I find that over the last few years especially, it has dulled quite a bit. Um, I think part of that is maybe selective. Uh, I just don't care enough sometimes to try and hear everything that's going on around me. You know, as a teacher, of course, I do pay attention to what's going on inside the classroom. Um, but I feel like I don't... It might also just be age. Uh, I'm not, I'm not picking out like where certain sounds or voices are coming from as well as I used to, like what corner of the room. Uh, but you know, my peripheral hearing is not as good as it used to be. It used to be very good. Uh, but I don't really have much in the way of anecdotes, unfortunately. I feel like I must have them, but they're just not coming to me. Maybe another side effect of aging. Um, so anyway, that was the last prompt. Uh, that was the soggy expat expat book maniac random questions tag um i'm not gonna say it three times fast uh but thank you to the originators for creating and also thank you to mark for from book time with elvis for tagging me even though this is a very late reply to that um hope everybody has a great day and as always thank you booktube